In this lesson, we're going to apply exponential growth to personal finances. And before we do that, we're going to talk about this thing called percent change. Um, it's not really exponential growth, but it's something that shows up in uh, personal finance. You know, you hear that an investment increased by this percent or stock went down by this percent or a company's workforce went down by a certain percent. They're talking about percent change. And percent change is really easy to calculate. Here's the formula. It says you take the amount of the change, you divide it by the original amount, and then you multiply it by 100% to make it a percentage. And for percent change, you have to indicate whether it's an increase or a decrease. So, if you, so let's look at an example. A company downsizes from 300 employees to 240 employees. If we look at this, I need to find the change in the amount of employees, which is 60, and I divide it by the original amount, not the 240, but the 300 they had originally. And so I have to convert that to a percent, and 60 divided by 30 is 1 fifth, and 1 fifth is 0.2, which means this is a 20% decrease because the number of employees went down. So if you own stock in a company and you hear that they reduce their workforce by 20%, maybe you don't want to have stock in that company anymore. Now let's look at a positive change. Um, I don't know if you guys know what this is, but there's something called the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is how they measure um, how healthy the stock market is. So on February 17th, 2012, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was 12,849.87. And in February 7th of 2014, the average was 15,749.08. And so in this case, I have to find the difference between these two, which is going to be 2,944.21, divide by the original amount, which is the 12,849.87, multiply it by 100%. And I can't do this math in my head, so you grab a calculator and you get this approximately equal to 0 0.2291 times 100%, which is 22.9%. In this case, it's an increase because it went up. So the percent change in the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 2012 to 2014 was about 22.9% increase. Now what I'm really interested in in this lesson is interest. Interest is a charge for borrowed money, generally a percent of the total amount borrowed, or it can be seen as the profit that is made from investments. And there are really two ways to calculate interest that we're going to look at. One of them is called simple and the other one is called compound. Now simple interest is calculated only on the original amount. So when they calculate your simple interest, all they look at is how much you borrowed or how much you invested. And compound interest is calculated on the balance, which is not only your original amount, but any interest that was calculated before. Now to see the difference between these two, we're going to look at the example of someone taking out a car loan for $15,000 for five years at 3% APR. And APR stands for annual percentage rate. If you've ever seen a car commercial, you hear that number thrown around a lot. And here are the formulas for simple and compound interest, or one of the formulas for compound interest. Um, so here's the deal with simple. Simple interest is a linear relationship. And the interest, I, is calculated by taking the principal, which is the amount borrowed, times the rate, times the time. And if you want to find your total amount, you take total amount A, you add that principal to the amount of interest accrued. And so this is like a linear equation, right? Now compound interest is exponential because it doesn't grow from the original amount. It grows from the original amount plus whatever interest you had. And so this is the standard exponential growth equation where R is the rate of increase, and this is one way to calculate compound interest. So principal times 1 plus the rate, remember that rate has to be turned into a decimal first, and then raised to the t power, which is time. So now let's take this example of the car loan 
and see the calculation differences between simple and compound interest. And then I'll show you the true evil genius of compound interest. So I have two tables set up, one for simple interest, one for compound. T, my independent variable, is time in years. And the amount of money that is owed in total is in this column here. And same here, T is time in years, amount of total owed right there. All right, so in zero years for both tables, no interest has accrued whatsoever. So it's still just the balance or, or it's still just the principal, which is 15,000. And so then at year one, what I have to do is I have to find 3% of 15,000 and add it to the 15,000 for simple interest. So my interest calculation for my simple interest is 15,000, which is the principal, the rate, which is 0 0.03, and my time for one year is just one. And that gives me $450. So after one year, I don't owe 15,000 anymore. I owe 15,450. And the way simple interest works is that each year I owe the exact same amount because the interest is calculated on the 15,000. So what I do is I'm going to add 450 for each year. So after year two, I owe 15,900 because I'm going to add 450. And then I have to add another 450 to get 16,350. And then I add another 450 to get 16,800. And then I add another 450 to get $17,250. So in the end, I would owe $17,250 in total. And you can, of course, you know, break that up into monthly payments to figure out how much you owe per month. So compound interest starts exactly the same. After the first year, I still only owe $15,450, right? Now, the difference is, instead of adding on 3% of $15,000, I need to add on 3% of 15,450. So that $450 of interest gets calculated in for the next interest payment. So instead of having an addition of a constant number, I'm going to have a multiplication times 1.03. The original, the previous amount, and then the 3% additional. And so I'm going to continually multiply by 1.03 and so after year two, it's $15,913.50. So if I just compare year two, compound interest costs me an additional $13.50. And then if I look at year three, it's gonna be $16,390.91. So it's about $40 more. And then I have to calculate again, and I get $16,882.64, which is about $82 more. And then finally, it's $17,389.12. And I mentioned earlier, there was an evil genius behind compound interest. And the evil genius behind compound interest is this concept called the period of compounding. Okay, And what that means is I'm going to not calculate interest at the end of the year. I'm going to break up that interest uh, in smaller chunks. So when you hear something like semi-annually, that means they're going to take that 3% that I owe and divide it in two and then charge me interest once in the middle of the year and then once at the end of the year. Now quarterly means they're going to take that 3% and divide it by four and charge me interest four times a year. Monthly means they're going to take that interest rate, divide it by 12 and charge me interest 12 times a year. And then weekly is 52 times a year, and then daily is 365 times a year. And you're going to see that it's not going to be a huge difference, because if, in the short run at least, um, because if it were a huge difference in the short run, no one would be allowed to get away with this. So it's just going to be a small amount higher than $17,389.12. So I'll show you what the calculation is going to be for semi-annually. So for semi-annually, what you do is you take 15,000, and then it's exponential still, so, but what you do is you take the interest rate and you divide it by two. Now, instead of just taking the interest five times, you're gonna do it twice a year, 
which means interest is gonna be calculated 10 times throughout the life of the loan, which means you're gonna owe $17,408.11 if your interest is compounded semi-annually. So already it's, it's a little bit more than it was before, right? So if I look at quarterly, same deal, I take the 15,000, now I take my interest rate and I divide it by four because I'm gonna calculate the interest four times. And that's why they call it the annual percentage rate because if you add up all the percentages that they calculate over the year, it's going to add up to 3%. And so this time I have to take this interest calculation four times a year for five years, which is 20, which gives me $17,417.76. Okay, monthly, same deal, take the 15,000. Now this time I'm gonna break, break the 0 0.03 up into 12 pieces and calculate that uh, 12 times five times, because it's, it's 12 times a year for five years, which gives me $17,424.25. Now weekly is going to be 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 52 raised to the 52 times 5 times uh, 52 times 5 power, which is $17,426.76. And then finally daily, which is how which is how credit cards calculate interest. It's 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 365. And the number of times they calculate interest over the five years is going to be 365 times five times, which gives you, and you want it to be some huge difference, but it's not. That's the evil genius. It's just a little bit higher. It's going to be $17,427.41. So by adding a word in between compound and interest in a contract, I can squeeze just a little bit more money out of my customers, right? So going from $17,389.12 to $17,427.41. And compared to simple interest, which was $17,250. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal. You know, it's not a huge amount of money in the short run. Now, if you had your loan out for a lot longer, for maybe 10, 15 years, then this number would be a lot higher. So now you may have noticed that the formula I was using was a little bit different for compound interest. So here's the formula that you're going to find for compound interest where you don't calculate the interest once, but you calculate it n times over a period of time. And so all it is is the exact same formula I used before. I just replaced R with R divided by n, showing how many times I have to break that interest rate up. And then now I'm not just going to raise it to the t power, but the n times t, because remember, n is the number of times per year. And so this is the real formula for compound interest. If you only have to remember one formula for compound interest, this is the one you want to remember. Because if it's just calculated annually, then n is 1, and who cares? Now it's time for you to try an example on your own. First, I want you to find the percent change from 2 mosquitoes to 40 mosquitoes. And I'm choosing mosquitoes because we're coming close to the time of the year when, for some reason, mosquitoes start entering into my classroom. I don't know why that is. And then second, let's say you borrow $5,000 at 5% APR for two years. And I want to know how much will have to be paid back if A, your interest is calculated simply, using simple interest, if it is compounded annually, and if it's compounded monthly.